problem, Tisa. We are, we are here to just have some fun today. Yeah, nothing really like serious, academically serious. Like nothing heavy. Talking about art. It's going to be so interesting because um, for once, you know, I'm a, um, I'm an expert on art, but usually what I do is I study what other artists do. And most part of those artists are not living people anymore. <laughs> but this time, <laughs> this time I got to interview a real artist. <laughs> the one who's still alive. Yeah, usually you still, still alive. <laughs> yeah, uh, famous, but if you're not yet, then... <laughs> You are way too alive to be famous, Skinner. Everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> so it's very interesting. Okay, also new for Leah. Great. Guys, do you know any uh, Hispanic artists? Because we are going to be taking some Hispanic artists today. Do you know any any names? Anyone? Gaudí, of course. Felicia. Yes. Gaudí, Jessica, maybe you will be lucky today. want <laughs> <laughs> to talk about Hispanic artists. Maruja Mayo. Oh, Tisa. Great. Diego Velázquez. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, you're saying very, very big ones, very important ones. I love Velázquez. What can I say? Okay, I think everything looks good from my end. I think we're already live on YouTube with millions of viewers. <laughs> Not kidding. <laughs> don't, don't be nervous, Paula or Skinner. <laughs> we don't it's have only million millions viewers. of viewers, girls. Yeah. <laughs> don't be nervous. Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Should we no should pressure. we start maybe? Yeah. It's already cool. nine past seven. I think we can start now if everyone is ready and excited for this um discussion. Uh I'm so I'm just going to, yeah. to open <laughs> the nervous. session now. Take a deep breath, inhale, exhale. <laughs> we have a very friendly audience here. Some of the audience are, are you know, you, you, you guys know each other already, so don't be nervous. It's going to be fine. <laughs> All right. So, um, hola, hola, good evening, good afternoon to everyone in Indonesia, Spain, or anywhere else in the world. Um, bienvenidos. Selamat datang. Welcome to Conversation on Art between Indonesia and Spain. My name is Primarita. I am the community manager for Dime Porque, and I am going to be your host for tonight. Um, so tonight, the main discussion will take around 80 minutes, and we will open the floor for any questions after that. But in the meantime, if anyone has any questions, you are welcome to write it in the chat throughout the session. Um, but I do want to remind you to keep your microphone off because we are also live on YouTube at the moment with millions of followers <laughs> and viewers. Um, so if any of you are watching from YouTube right now, you can also write your questions in the comments and we will pass it on to the speakers here on Zoom. Um, all right, so tonight's topic is very interesting and inspiring because we get to look some uh, we get to look at some of the most famous artists or painters from the Hispanic world with Paula de la Pisa, which is an art history and sp uh, Spanish teacher from Instituto Snebriha Asia, and also to hear from Skinner Orami, who is a really talented surrealist artist from the Lucy Dream Gallery. And please stay until the end because we have social media challenges that you can participate in to, um, to win plenty of merchandise from all the organizers. So don't miss out. Um, okay, so while we're waiting for everyone else to join the call here on Zoom and viewers on YouTube, I would like to briefly introduce everyone who is involved in making this event happen. Um, I'd like to mention that I'm so excited about tonight because it's an event of different communities namely art and language. And it's just so lovely that we can all get together even only virtually. 
Okay, so as I mentioned before, for those of you who don't know us yet, I am from Dime Porque and we are a community of Spanish language students and Hispanic culture enthusiasts. Um, Paula will talk about this a little bit uh, later on, but when we say Hispanic cultures, it means everything that comes from Spain and Latin America or South America. And that includes arts, language, movies, music, dance, even food and football. Um, we were founded in Jakarta in 2018, and since then we have been organizing many activities, both online and offline, on everything that is considered Hispanic. As you can see from the posters here, we have a variety of, of activities and events. And also, maybe lastly, a little fun fact about our name, Dime Porque, in Spanish, it means tell me why. So this is something that we say a lot when we were learning Spanish as a second language. Um, and even until now, we still ask it every every now and then. So I think the name really um, represents uh, our spirit to learn forever. All right, so next up is Instituto Snebriha Asia, a longtime partner and a good friend of Dime Porque. Um, it is a part of Instituto Snebriha, an international network of educational centers um, devoted to teaching Spanish language based in Universidad Nebriha in Madrid, Spain. So 2018 was the first time that Nebriha set up its headquarters in Jakarta. And in 2021, as a result of the pandemic, it specializes its education offer on online courses. Um, since then, it has expanded its activity to other countries in the area, in the region, such as Singapore and Malaysia, and now they have reached thousands of students so far. And the good news is, if by the end of this session you are interested in learning Spanish, you can join us in Spanish Express, which is a free online trial path that we organize every month with different um, themes. Um, the next one will be on March 29, uh, and we have school edition. Um, uh, this month. And Instituto Snebriha also offers an art course with Professora Paula here. Um, so if you are interested in learning about Hispanic art, you can let us know from the details that we will provide in the Zoom chat here um, by my friend from the Instituto Nebriha. All right. Okay, so the third one is Lucy Dream, which is both a gallery and a community. Um, as a gallery, their aim is to support emerging artists in telling their stories through the Lucy Dream Gallery platform to introduce artists and their artworks both at local and global levels and to provide resources and insights into the industry and digital marketing in order to support artists in reaching a wider audience. As a community, their aim is to be the place where artists can meet and support each other to pursue their goals in the industry. And with the collaboration with Seeds of Change, all Lucy Dream artists have the opportunity to contribute to social programs. So this collaboration has enabled uh, Lucy Dream and Seeds for a Child to create a unique program that provides children with the chance to learn in an engaging, creative, and skillful way. The program runs for one month, where the Lucy Dream Gallery community works with children in a learning environment to help develop their life knowledge and life skills through art in collaboration with their artists. As part of their commitment to social responsibility, uh, Lucy Dream Gallery contributes a portion of their profit to the Seeds for a Child program. Okay, so... Um, I don't want to hijack the session any further, <laughs> so... Um, that's the, the introduction that, that I have for now. Um, now, I would like to invite our two speakers, Paula and Skinner. Hola, hola. Paula, hola, Skinner. Hello. How are you guys today? Hello. I'm, I'm, I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> good, good. Excited? Very excited. <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, don't worry, don't worry. Everything will be fine. <laughs> um, so before we start our conversation, uh, maybe could you... Uh, both introduce yourself briefly, starting maybe from where it, you are right now. Where are you in the world right now? Okay, shall I go first, guys? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yes. Please. Okay, so, uh, yes, uh, Primarita already briefly introduced me, but my name is Paula de la Pisa, and I'm a Spanish teacher and also an art teacher in Instituto Nebrija, uh, in Asia, where includes Instituto Nebrija, Yakarta, Malaysia, and Singapore. 
Um, I am an art specialist. That was my, my studies in university. And after that is when I became a language teacher, a Spanish teacher. And I'm very happy to be able to combine these, these two fields of knowledge uh, that, that we do in this um, event today. And also in, in my classes, we often, we of course, we learn Spanish, but uh, we try to include other cultural um, contents in our courses. And we also have, as already Primarita said before, we, we did a, an art, uh, Hispanic art class that it was absolutely, um, uh, it was a gift for me, really. It was, it was a very nice time for me and my students to spend talking about Hispanic art. And aside of that, I basically uh, teach Spanish and create didactic materials uh, for Nebrija University in Madrid. And I'm currently living in León, in Spain. So I'm quite far away from most of you guys <laughs> right now. Awesome, thank you, Paula. I hope it's not too too early or too late in Leon right now. It's in the afternoon, right? It's in the afternoon. It's right now, uh, one p.m. So perfect mm. time, perfect time for a for a for discussion. Cup of coffee and a discussion. <laughs> ah, yes. All right. <laughs> thank you for the introduction, Skinner. Maybe you want to go. Uh, yes, you should go next <laughs> because you're the only <laughs> the next speaker. Um, Hi everyone, my name is Kinar Ohrami. I'm a semi-surrealist artist. I'm originally from Java, born and raised in Malang, but I've been in Bali uh, almost five years and now I'm more focused doing art. I'm an emerging artist uh, that collaborate with Lucid Dream Gallery. So it's it's been a couple of months um, collaborate with them. And now I'm really focusing on art and not doing anything else. Just create art and cre create art and experiment with more materials and mediums. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, my introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You did well. Thank you so much for for Paula and, and Skinner for for being here. And we're already whenever you are. I think you can start uh, sharing your screen, Paula, if you want. Okay, let's do that. So. I think it's working fine, right, guys? Can you see me? Yes, <laughs> see my everything. Is okay, good. so mm -hmm. today we are going to do, basically, Skinner and I, we are going to have the wonderful opportunity to do something that we both love, that is talk about art. So we are also happy that you guys are here and you are able to, to be part of this. But uh, just, just for us, is, I think it's going to be tons of fun to be able to discuss this topic because it's something that we both love. But we both love it since uh, from a very different perspective, right? I am a, I'm an art specialist. That means that I don't paint. I don't create. I mean, my students here can say that I really can't paint. And my skills drawing are very poor. Uh, but my, my, my studies were about to, to, to know better, to understand what the artists were doing, right? What they were trying to express, what they were, which techniques they were using, which influences they had. And now for once, uh, we also have the opportunity to have the vision of someone that actually works with art and, and, and be in that process, right? There is a Skinner. So Skinner, are you excited? Yeah, I'm very, very excited for this conversation. <laughs> Great. So I, we, prepared, uh, we have prepared uh, some, some topics that we think can be interesting to chat uh, and, and I think the, the first of them is that art is actually something universal. I think wherever you go in the world, doesn't matter if you are in, in, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, America, art is always there. And it's there because it's a, it's a way for human beings to express themselves, just as we do speaking, just as we do um, singing, as we do dancing, as we do in many ways. Art is just another another way of, of expressing ourselves, right? And well, that's what makes a very interesting connection with the world of communication, because at the end, art is a way of communication. Are you do you agree, Skinner, on that? Absolutely agree with that. You can communicate anything what we feel and our experience through art, through any any kind of art it can be music, like you say, dancing or songwriting, mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And so art is something we can find all around the world. Of course, art is not doesn't look exactly the same all around the world, but it, there is some kind of uh, principles that are they are there for everyone. Uh, what do you think, Kiner? What do you think can be those 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 elements that make art universal? What what are those elements that we can say, okay, wherever you go, you find this in art? Mm. I think art is quite um quite close with our daily life as well, how we see things, because you can like something or you hate something or you do anything in your daily life and you just want to share it with other people or make it more, how you say it, uh, immortal in a way. Mm -hmm. I don't find the right word for that, but like you want to um, capture that moment uh mm -hmm. in something that people can see for over generations so yeah and that's something that not only happened to you right that's something that every artist do you think every artist has that necessity of it's uh i think it's quite natural for for people because we we are human we are have emotion if we have attachment into something we want to uh make it oh. So I think, yeah, we we are very related into that. Artists mm -hmm. or not, I mean, you know, when you just yeah, want to, yeah, it's not you, about artists, right? What it, what is an artist? <laughs> no one can say, no one can say who is the true artist and who isn't, right? The, what is important is the art is a way of communication and it serves us to express things right and which things we can express well unlimited many kind right yeah. um what do you think they um, there is today we are going to talk about hispanic art and primarita already made a, a small introduction about that hispanic art is not referred only about spanish art it's much something much bigger and of course much more interesting uh, so we are going to be discussing, uh, we are going to try to put together and do some comparisons uh, between Hispanic art and your art, Skinner. <laughs> do you think we are going to find some points in common? Oh, I think I'm quite confident that we are, I mean, as an artist, even though I don't know these masters before, but I think there is some part of the message in their art that relatable to a living artist now that we can, mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can compare, is it really that relatable to other artists now? Right, right, because at the end, the ways of the ways of understanding art that are there, right? Even if everyone is different, um, maybe you can find similarities, right? In this, in this uh, artist, in these painters from Spain and from Latin America. Okay, and do you know something about Hispanic art now Skinner or we are going to be like in the in the fun of of really experimenting um, that what well, is also amazing right because like first uh, contact with uh, with a new world what is that how do you see how do you see Apple. this art oh, uh, excuse me what? how do you see how do you see the the hispanic um art masters like the masters of hispanic art how do you perceive them in the very interesting with their point of view as well because I'm a now uh, become a surrealist artist. Dali was very amazing person, I guess. Like the way he regurgitate her uh, his subconscious into art is quite amazing. How he creates the shape, how he creates the creatures in there is quite amazing for me and mm -hmm. at first actually for uh when i was a kid every time i see something surrealist i didn't know the word surrealist before when i was a kid but it made me a little bit scared i was like what is this why it looks like that <laughs> now i've been a surrealist artist i was like hmm interesting <laughs> that's a normal i think that's a normal reaction for everyone when they when they get to know dali it's like yeah. what is this guy doing <laughs> so yeah so i think it's i think it's a it's a quite normal it's a quite normal reaction okay so shall we go with the first one sure. i prepare i prepare a first one and this one is 
Do you know? Pablo Picasso. Yeah, oh my God. Pablo Ruiz Picasso. The quote we decided to give to this uh, conversation today is actually from him. He said, painting is just another way of writing a personal journey, mm -hmm. a diary, right? Um, it's another way of a diary. Shit, wait, wait a second. <laughs> Your light is gone. <laughs> The light is gone. This is getting dark. We were not I supposed to talk about know. about dark art today, but of course, <laughs> it's a very inter interesting topic too. Guys, if you if you are if you are curious ever about Caravaggio, Skinner was just a Caravaggio painting for some seconds. If you're curious about that. <laughs> with a wonderful claroscuro. Okay. Okay, so um, painting is just another way of writing personal journal. I'm absolutely relatable with this because what I paint mostly is my personal journal, what I experience on society, family, friends, and even myself inside my head. Uh, some people do it on writing, and I do really love writing, but for me, mm -hmm. art is it's the best way for me to express it. And mm -hmm. at some point, I heard a quote saying that if you want to be an artist, you are um, in constant exposing yourself, mm -hmm. like exposing your diary, your journal, because that's what you experience. So I think I'm very relatable with this quote. And yeah, yeah I mean, that is number one muse, number one inspiration for me to paint. It's Picasso? Picasso is your number one? Uh, oh, yeah, for yeah, for for creating art, just like creating art. He was a wonderful, he was a wonderful painter, and not only a painter. He was a, also uh, he was doing also sculpture. He was also doing, I mean, many things, right? Um, and the thing is, I don't know, guys, if if you have this information, but but Picasso was a genius child. Some artists are like that, right? When he was 13 years old, 12, 12 years old, he was able to paint perfect copies from the big masters of painting in Spain, like Velázquez or, and he was perfect. His technique was perfect. He's very good, right? So is, is this how it works? Skinner, do you think that artists are born artists? They're born like that, they're genius since they are, one year old, two years old, five years old, like 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 Picasso. I think we, we all, I think we are born uh, genius. We are born creative, but some people just choose art. But more, but the thing that I that I know for sure is every art is quite quirky. So yeah, it's genius, but it's just you know there's a twist in it that make it more interesting. <laughs> You know, because they, they see things from different perspective, you know, how they see an object, how they, they perceive an object is quite different with other people. But yeah, yeah you mean that are... they need artists, artists, they need to have a different, maybe a certain level of curiosity and a certain level of, of um, the desire of understanding the world in a different way and express it through them right but but i don't know if, if that's something that is um only it's something that you only can get born with it or you can also develop with life because life also changes you right so maybe for some people it's something that they experience in a very young age and for others it's something that they build with the years right through yeah. your life through experience how was your what, what was your case you were one of those genius artist or you became an artist during your life? I think I was quite a creative kid when I was young but then because I'm born in the house where there's no art in the house so if 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 my mom see me drawing they're like no don't draw it's it's not good so mm -hmm. it was bad. so I didn't know that I have that uh, skill to paint or to draw until when I uh, grew up, I was like, it's, it's all the, the, the childhood that 
cannot express that it's like explode it's like okay mm -hmm. now it's time for you to draw and to paint but since i was a kid i was like want well, i really love to paint i love to create something but it's not allowed in the house before so that's mm -hmm. why i, was like, I need to so you, became, you became your destiny anyways yeah <laughs> It's calling, it's calling. It's calling, of course. Okay, another thing that is very interesting about Picasso is that he was very, very interested in the concept of truth instead of beauty. I think when we talk about art, many people imagine that art is very related to beauty. Yeah. So art must be pretty. Yeah. Art must be beautiful. Yeah. And of course, a lot of art is beautiful. If we think about Rubens or if we think about Leonardo da Vinci, we think about Michelangelo, we think about all these classic artists, painters. Beauty is, an, is a very important topic for them. But there's other artists who don't give so much importance to beauty and they try to use other elements. And for example, Picasso, he was a lot about the truth. The yeah. concept of truth. What would you say that is the most important concept for you? It's also beauty, it's truth, is I'm absolutely on Picasso theme. Uh, <laughs> on of truth. Because I, you know, when when so, like, if we say something beautiful, like uh, how people like a common people say see things beautiful, yeah, I do like that. And art is beautiful, but for me, the truth is above beauty because mm -hmm. a lot of my painting as uh is quite dark and yeah. a lot of let's show them let's show them some of your paintings while you talk about this okay so they can know what we are what we are talking about so here we have a painting from skinner his mother what what have you done to me and here we have a self-portrait from picasso so you were saying skinner so it's like you know it's it's not something really nice to see. Like why there's blood there? Why it's it's like the head was chopped? It's like a lot of people was like that's quite scary. I don't want to put that in my wall. It's 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 not beautiful. All my painting is not beautiful, but it's the truth. It's what I experience in life, and that what's happened in life, what I see and what I experience, what I what I feel. And not all people understand that because they prefer like, oh, I like something beautiful. But yeah, we all like something beautiful. But how about not the beautiful one? I think we should embrace that as well. So yeah. the more people hate my painting, the more like, I'm going to paint it bigger so you can see it. <laughs> With more details, yeah. more blood, so you can see <laughs> more <it> better. <laughs> Yeah, but that's that's definitely true. Look at look at this self portrait from Picasso from nineteen seven. He's not worried about being pretty over here. He's perfectly able to draw with perfect detail a mm. painting very similar to the ones that Raphael or or uh, Michelangelo were able to do. But he chooses to do something different. He chooses truth over over beautiness, right? He chooses um, to represent himself, not as he looks, but as he is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense for our uh, viewers today. Very makes sense because like the, the third head at the bottom, like on the plate, it was me. It's actually like a self-portrait, but self I couldn't, well, I don't make it resembles as me, but it was my picture. Like mm -hmm. I took a picture of that and then I paint it. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a story of me, my mother and my grandmother, like mm -hmm. how people uh, doing the same mistakes, doing the, the same karma in generation and generation, and they're like hurting their child, hurting their child and doesn't want to heal. So that is why like the eyes is like blindfolded because they keep mm -hmm. doing the same mistakes. That is the truth. Something that is not beautiful, but mm -hmm. it's there. So it I is beautiful. Know. It is beautiful anyways. It just maybe doesn't follow the classical canon of beautiness, right? It is definitely beautiful. Definitely beautiful. Mm -hmm. There is another thing that I see it can have um, uh, something in common, right? Between Picasso and you. This is very interesting. Is that when, when Picasso 
uh, was in his uh, most um, brilliant years. At that time, the photography appeared. The, the technique of photography did appear. So this had a great effect uh, over Picasso's approach to art because suddenly he thought, okay, since we have pictures, he, he, since we have photographs, photography, what is the sense of representing reality as reality? Mm -hmm. I can also take a picture. Mm -hmm. what, if, what is the sense of doing a portrait of this man, showing exactly how he looks, if I can do a picture of him, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's, that's somehow, that was a very important topic for him to change his uh, goals with art and decide to create something that will really represent reality not um, with a perfect image, but um, with a perfect concept. Mm -hmm. True. I, so what is your approach on this? What do you think? Uh, I have a, because I don't go on art school and, uh, and I have a friend who is quite, uh, try to draw everything like technically and it pissed me off. It's like you should do the nose right, or you should you should paint the eyes right. It's not, it's not, it's not right. It's it's wrong there, here and there. I was like, stop, stop. Let let me show you something else. Let me show you something that is also nice and beautiful, but not like that. Something is different because everyone can learn that. And without painting, you can see that person the the nose like that, the eyes like that. What? I'm going to show you something else more than that. But uh, my friend, so it's quite persistent. So like, no, it should be perfect. It should be, you know, the lips have to be perfect. And I was like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that there's different approaches to art, right? And all of them, there is no right or wrong in this case. Yeah. Uh, many things can work and different people has different ways of, of um, achieving the goal of creating art that is actually uh, communicating something and is actually creating a, um, creating a response on the viewer, right? What, is, what, what all artists want. They want to create a, an impression, right? They want to create a response on the person that is watching. They want to involve that person inside of, the, of their painting to draw that person in right and there's many ways of doing it of course technical perfection is a is a wonderful thing but it's not the only thing exactly. it's a wonderful thing but it's not that is not the only thing and i think picasso and you quite agree on that <laughs> <laughs> absolutely picasso theme <laughs> picasso theme okay let's see because i have some some more uh, some more artists and maybe you need you want to change the the theme Again, <laughs> I, I think I'm, I'm quite sure I'm Dali, Dali theme myself. <laughs> yeah, I think surrealism is, is going I'm strong. Here. Curious, you know, like. Surrealism is going strong. Well, surrealism for the people who are is watching us and, and don't know about it is uh, the, the artistic movement where we can find Salvador Dali, what is a Spanish painter. Mm. And but not only a painter, also a uh, filmmaker, writer, uh, he also did sculpture, any kind of art, actually. When we were talking about him in our Hispanic art class uh, in Nebrija, I, I remember we, we referred to him as the ultimate showman. Whoa. There is some, some artists, they are not only artists, but only are also showman and showwoman. So I think Salvador Dali is actually one of them, right? Um, surrealism, there is this, this I mean, uh, Skinner, what is for you surrealism? Because you, you described yourself as a, as a surrealist artist. So what is for you this, this uh, style or this kind of art? Uh, at first I didn't uh, quite aware of what I paint because I, usually just naturally paint what I want to paint. And then uh, as I dive deep into surrealism, I was like, it's a, it's a little bit the, the kind of style that I want. 
kind of style that I want to paint. And especially when it comes to something subconscious, because um, when I'm doing my spiritual journey as well, and I learning a lot about subconscious and I'm starting to paint something that come from my subconscious, which is turned into something like this. And it was that moment I have a like a, like some kind of joy doing it. Like all this th the thing that uh, people think that I'm crazy because I'm thinking about that. But then I paint it and it, it and everyone can see it and some people appreciate it. And yeah, actually, um, surrealism is something that it was scared me when I was a kid, but now it's just my world. <laughs> <laughs> is it the world of dreams no the world of dreams is your world yeah 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 because that was that was uh, uh, what um surrealist artists were actually defending not bringing to the table that we are much more than our conscient thoughts yeah we're much deeper than that is is many more things happening on levels of ourselves that we don't know that well and they're more subconscious it was at this time when when the Freud, uh, the, the psychotherapy, the, the um, uh, theories from from Freud were delivered. The book was published, so it was a great inspiration for for the surrealists. And for sure, um, the world of dreams and the subconscious it, it's it's what is very important uh, to them. Do you think? that we are more creative Skinner on a subconscious level than on a conscious level? Uh, I, I absolutely agree with that. I think we are subconsciously creative. I mm -hmm. think by, let's see like how I'm subconsciously choosing colors, how I subconsciously choosing symbolism on my painting, how I subconsciously choosing uh, a story to tell from emotions because like like ex for example in this painting why there's a cage it's like a symbolism as well and I wasn't aware why I put the, the cage in there but then I was like yeah that's what I feel actually when you are like have idealism if you are um, doing something that is not the mainstream and people are going to be like ah you're not belong here it feel like your cage and and it's appear on my painting and after I finish it I was like that's uh that's uh what my subconscious telling me to do to paint so I think we are creatively uh, uh we are subconsciously creative mm -hmm. yeah that's very that's very interesting and definitely is the point is the point from from Dali also right he's very interested in um in showing that what is in our heads is um deeply is more interesting than what we can do when we are completely conscient and our ideas are here yeah. right True. so he for for being able to express that subconscious uh creativity dali used some mechanical techniques um mm -hmm. And some of them were like automatic drawing, mm -hmm. uh, automatic drawing for our viewers, basically trying to draw without, with your brain, with your head empty, mm -hmm. and then making sense from that what you draw and saying, okay, now this looks like a um, chicken, so it must be a chicken. And this looks like a peer, so it must be a peer. And this looks like... <laughs> No, so this is part of the of the technique uh, mm -hmm. of automatic drawing, and of and also of course the exquisite corpse, where it means it's a collaborative way of creating art uh, mm -hmm. in a way that a, a person starts something and someone else continues it and someone else continues it without knowing what was before. Mm -hmm. So it's very it it sounds uh, not connected, but at the same time you make sure there's really. Um, uh subconscious art yeah. right have you been using any kind of these techniques or or other techniques that allows you to um 
uh, to create art in or to start this research of art in a mechanical way? Uh, uh, it's actually, it just come in my mind right now. Like I never think about automatic drawing until this moment. <laughs> when I recall again about how I paint, actually that's how I paint because usually my composition on all my painting is quite boring. It's just like something in the middle. That's it. Like there's nothing complicated on my composition and the painting. But then the process of doing that, um, I don't plan. I don't have any blueprint of what I'm going to paint. It's just like, okay, it's flowing because usually I use my emotions. So like this painting or mother painting, it was very um, intuitively for me to do the painting. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just like, okay, whatever I, it, it comes in my mind. And mm -hmm. even though it looks like a head, but I never plan that. I just like move it with the flow. And it's just like yeah. the emotion and just extract it into a visual. And maybe later it got so more, kinda, more it, it got yeah. it got more figurative later, right? Like it, okay, so I'm gonna act this actually are gonna be these five heads and this is gonna be kind of cage and this is gonna be and everything uh falls into place at some point, right? Yeah, true. I do it that way. And a lot of people are like, you don't sketch first, I'm like, no. <laughs> I just do <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes, of course. I mean, there's many artists who who works who works like that um so how would you say because this this way of um uh this this uh, mechanical techniques to create art that we were discussing about dali it was a way for for him for finding inspiration he will uh, find inspiration doing that but what about you how would you find inspiration uh usually from because all my painting is satirical most likely and then uh, I see the society around me. That's it. it's quite inspiration. Whatever it is, painful experience, happy experience, everything. It's all my inspiration to make art, and mm -hmm. it's quite challenging as well because for me to express emotion in a painting, in um, therapeutic for me. And mm -hmm. that's how, yes, I see the masters as well. I see Dali for inspiration and Hinonymous Borch and then a lot more other artists that, uh, especially Van Gogh as well, is uh, my inspiration, but it's all come from life, from mm -hmm. uh, my life stories as well. Yeah, I think that's very, I think even when artists are not interested in showing their personal lives, at the end, their personality, what is created through their personal life, appears right at the end. Appears in their in their own artistic style. So is this really a, there is is possible really to hide who you are when you're an artist? Mm -hmm. I think that the whole topic is to to discover who you are through art, right? That's a that's a big point. So I think that's something that that many many artists uh, have in common, right? Well. After seeing these two beautiful paintings from from Skinner and from and from Dali, this is a portrait he made of his wife, um, and then called it Galatea. Uh, but but we can see really how uh, how this environment of surrealism looks like, right? It it, it doesn't look like a, from a real world. It, it looks like it comes from a world of dreams. And I think that's something that Skinner and, and Dali have really in, co in common, right? You have guys uh, really in common. But okay, we have another artist that we would like to talk about. And this is, I know, one of the favorite of so many people, Frida Kahlo. Of course. <laughs> How many people loves this woman? <laughs> many people. Do you like her, Skinner? Yeah, she's, an artist, like. she's, uh, she's very amazing. <laughs> she's really amazing. She was really, really amazing. And something that people maybe don't know much about, I think sometimes as a, as a art teacher, sometimes I have the, the wish, I have the um, desire 
of showing people that this vision we have about Frida Kahlo, where Frida is constantly suffering for the ego. Yeah. Everything she's doing is for the ego because the ego has betrayed her. And the ego has, mm, I don't know, done all these things in life. And apparently Frida only lives around the ego and that's very far from the, from the truth, right? Frida Kahlo was a political activist. And that's not something that I, uh, I am just um, uh, saying randomly right now. That's in the books. That's in the reality of her life. She was an active political uh, activist. She did many works in service um, uh, to the Mexican Revolution, but it was a social social revolution happening in Mexico during Frida, Frida Kahlo's time. And and that's why I ask you, what do you think? about this uh, way of using <clears throat> art uh, as a political, social um, activist tool? Because it has been done many times. Mm, it's, yeah, it's, it's everywhere. It's been, it's been repeated uh, for decades, for years and years. And I think, because most of the time artists is quite, uh, have, have a, a unique perspective on politics or anything and they they have a how you say like they want to say something but not like just talk because artists usually we don't talk we paint so <laughs> we 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 visualize something that uh, our message and put it into painting and this painting going to talk itself to people and that is how powerful art is because art is it's it's very close with our soul. So everyone when sees this painting, they're going to get the message. And that's yeah. how we we don't have to like struggling talking everywhere. Just like just see it, and then people are going to like, yeah, I understand. I I get your message. And I think that is quite a powerful tool as well to be in social activist or political and mm -hmm. has been it's already been used for years so i think that's how, how that's how artists works yeah we paint and then we, we paint yeah but i think sometimes people people see a great wall between art and politic or art mm -hmm. and activism or mm -hmm. art and it's like yeah artists do art mm -hmm. and politics do politics politicians do politics right so there is a big separation um and i think people don't see the um, the connection between those two but knowing that that connection exists do you think is is a good idea is a good thing that art has that power and the artist use that that power to educate or to move the feelings of people or to try to explain um or to justify uh, an ensemble of ideas or or a prog or, a, or a politic program what do you think of that uh because the thing is yeah it's like a like you said politics do politics uh politician do politics artists they paint but because art when art is creating art art supposed to make people feel and it's contagious so yeah, they can do the politics, but we can move people, you know, through art because it's contagious. And yes. that can uh, deliver the message to the politicians because that's what people feel. Because art is usually, uh, the message from art is usually relatable with everyone mm -hmm. because they experience life and they're very uh, true to reality. Like, Mm -hmm. They embrace reality as it is. So I think when artists speak about the message, it's relatable to a lot of people. And that is very contagious and mm -hmm. can move people quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see here, for example, this painting from, from Frida. That is, a, that is a political painting. So it, it looks like a portrait. It's a, it's a double portrait from Frida. Both, both of the women are Frida. But one of them uh, is wearing a more European kind of dressing, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of 
kind of uh, clothing and dress. And the one on the right is wearing the traditional Mexican clothing. Of course, if you know a little bit of the history of Latin America, you will know that uh, the um, uh, Spain conquered a big, big part of, of Latin America and brought their own culture, their own uh, religion, their own food, their own everything over there. And that was, of course, uh, for some time in detriment of their traditional culture, the traditional culture from the Hispanic American countries. So when Frida was an activist, she was asking for to recover their traditional uh, values and their traditional culture from Mexico. So this painting is about that. This painting is about showing how she wants to get back or she wants to show that it's good to go back to their own origins before before the 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 before the Spaniards right coming to Latin America and we chose also this painting from you because it's also a painting that uh, is very related to activism right so that is the my life experience as well living in a corrupt uh, system so how it feels to not be able to survive daily because we have a corrupt system. I, I remember when I was almost died in the front of a hospital and the hospital's like, I'm sorry, I cannot help you. And then it's, that's how desperate and vulnerable I was. And I su I supposed to have this service or like I should be at least living my life with a, a, a support of the system of the country but then it's it's not like that in reality and a lot of people just embrace that and it's the the emotion that i portrayed here is um just the vulnerability because i cannot move anywhere like i like i try to work hard but then it's the money is, is just like not really not really that much to even to eat like literally mm poor like in a poverty that's a uh, the the painting or uh, the, the story of the painting that's how and that story doesn't apply only to you right it's a it's a yeah. story that yeah. many people in many people in indonesia can relate to yeah Isn't and it? i have a friends that uh, that's quite desperate as well and my heart broken seeing them and that's how we feel actually it's like we are screaming for help but they were like no no we cannot help you so that's how the message that I want to tell that we all, there's a lot of people down here cannot even survive to even eat, to even mm -hmm. survive the day. And it's very sad. It's very and do sad. you think, it's a, do, you, do you feel the reward of doing something for uh, society when you do this kind of art that is um, somehow asking for solutions or trying to make people conscient of difficulties of others or do you think is a is a help for your for your own country something that you're doing for your own people i think to the first step that i was that come in my mind actually just to put the awareness first that this is really happening and then we can proceed because without awareness what what's going on around us we're not going to find any solution we're not going to think that in in, in that uh, first so we we have to gain the awareness first that this is a real issue this is what's happening and a lot of people are like no, no no I don't believe that that's that's not happening around me or my family well in in outside your circle this is what happens so I want to send the message that uh, put awareness in them first because without the awareness they're going to all oh, New York talking nonsense so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is the first step for me to bring the yeah. awareness first. Yeah, I think it's definitely activism is some is definitely something is not present in every artist artwork. Not all artists are interested in activism, but many of them, many of them are interested in activism. There, many of them are interested in using their abilities, their skills, and their art to make the world better somehow. In the same way that a musician wants to achieve that, or in the same way that a writer wants to achieve that, or 
in the same way that actually everyone, right, with the, they have that that kind of social conscience, uh, want to achieve it. I think many artists have um, that that tendency. Would you say that is that common, or is it just my impression? No, no, no. I think that's uh, that's really true. That's uh, mm -hmm. we all. There's. I have a lot of friends that also like trying. We want to help, but of course. We cannot. We want to to give impact and solution to for world to get better, but mm -hmm. we cannot do that like right away. So mm -hmm. the first thing that I want to approach is my fellow artist as well that is also struggling. So I will try as much as I can to help them as for, uh, first, because there's a lot of artists that is suffering and. A lot of people in this country as well not really appreciated with art, and that's why they they see artists is not a, it's not a good thing. So, mm -hmm. to be an artist is actually a rough path in life. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm 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 saying this to all artists who choose to be an artist that you guys doing really well, and uh, I really support you and. Whatever it is, keep doing art, please. Keep doing art. Keep doing, keep doing art. art. We need it. Even us that we are not able to create any art, we need it to to learn from it. We need it to to experience it, to um, have feelings through it, to reflect on our lives through it, just the same as you do with a book or with any other thing, right? I think that there's a, this this idea. Many people think that you need to be an expert on art to be able to enjoy it. But that's not really necessary, right? You can know nothing about art and then just look at a painting and just try to just feel it just in the same way you will feel a song. You don't need to be an expert uh, producer to enjoy a song, right? So in the same way, you don't need to be an expert musician to enjoy a painting or an pa uh, expert um, in art to enjoy to enjoy a painting, right? So uh, for everyone that is watching us today, if you find any any kind of art that for you is interesting, just 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 have a walk in your in your city museum, just see what is there, try to enjoy what is there and, and give some support to the people who is actually um, creating art, even if society is not really supporting arts as, as something, mainly important right it's like we are all concentrated in other things there is not support that. your local artists yeah support, support your local artists. artists support your local artists first that is yeah the that's very important that that's very important of course well all the thing that uh we can take in common between skinner and frida kahlo is this is this concept of catharsis Ooh. so how do you how do you uh, how do you explain this, Skinner? How do you, how would you explain this oh. moment? Quite nervous. I was like, oh, seeing this painting again, it's uh, then my heart beat like a rabbit chased by the wolf. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's my my painting. It's uh, the the painting that I found my catharsis moment, and it was very hard for me to be to choose to be an artist. I was. A lot of people were saying that, oh, you're too young, you're probably going to leave art. And my family, friends, everyone around me said that, uh, don't be an artist, it's going to be miserable, you're going to be poor, just get a real job. Artist is not a real job. And I tried my best to find a real job and I wasn't happy. And at, this, at the moment I have a quite severe depression as well. And I almost quit that night and that moment when I I don't know what happened but a few seconds before it happens before it too late I see all my brushes my canvas and my paints I finally found one thing one reason because I couldn't find one reason to stay alive and then I see my table and I was like you know what I still want to do art actually this is the thing that I want to do a lot of people confuse me and they said I'm not trying enough actually I'm trying enough and art is the thing that I want to do and I couldn't kill myself that day but I killed myself in the painting 
So mm. I keep continue to, you know, the thing that I want to do is art. So mm. almost quit, but art saved my life at that month, at that night. So yeah, that, that's something that that I think you have really in common with Frida Kahlo because for her also I think painting was a way of healing herself. Um, she had a very bad uh, physical condition for a very long time in her life. She had an, an accident in a bus when she was uh, very young. And since then, she had problems with her column. Over here is the broken column, la columna rota in, 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 in Spanish, right? And she's talking about all that effects that she, all that pain that she actually had in her body. Uh, and that also pro produced the fact that she was not able to get pregnant and have children. She wasn't able to walk normally. And with the years, her condition got worse and worse until the point that she needed to paint from her bed. But still, she wanted to keep on painting, right? Because for her, it was uh, a way of healing herself. If not healing her body, at least healing her soul. <laughs> And, and and show what was actually happening. Of course, this is not a real image of Frida, but I think you can really see very well, you can really perceive what were her feelings and what were her uh, suffering at that point, right? And I think that's something you also try to try to reflect yeah. in your own in your own painting. What do you yeah. think about, about Frida's about Frida's painting? I think this one is a, spe a specific one where catharsis is yeah, it's very, very present. Very, very deep, actually. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, yeah, when, when, if it's Frida, art is like a way uh, for her to heal. It's, I'm quite, I'm very, very, like 100% relatable with that. And even in this painting, uh, if a lot of artists couldn't say, what their emotions so they see it uh, they explain it by painting and when we see the artwork we really we really can stand in their shoes yeah so it was it was quite amazing and deep message from her as well mm -hmm. even though even though at this you know when you see these two paintings you see how vulnerable the art is and it's not something that people want to expose to the world, you know, but you have mm -hmm. the, the bravery to, to do that. Like, oh, you almost get it yourself. Or you have something going on uh, in your life and people know it, but it's, uh, the message is, we're we're here but we still continue you know we're we're surviving and yeah and that may and that may allow others to feel that way too right because sometimes if we if we don't have the the examples of all the people suffering we we don't feel that we have the right mm. to, to suffer to be broken right and exactly. i think i think frida is showing it with frida and you you're showing right like we have the right to be broken here we are we are broken and and we are going to keep on going. And that's not something that happens only to artists. Artists are not yeah, um, to everyone. Uh, people that is especially living in the drama. That like, like uh, those kind of events, those kind of situations, they are tough, happens to everyone. Everyone have rough times, right? So I think uh, Frida and you, you do a great job here re reminding people that, that it's okay to be broken sometimes, right? That you still can keep on, that you, you still can um, uh, give to others and you still can help others through that brokenness somehow. Yeah, that's why um, I said like to the death, it's like it was, the death was so near to me, like right in my face, but it's like, you know what kids, not today, I'll give you another chance. <laughs> <laughs> not today. Today is not the day. Very close. <laughs> okay. So uh, before we finish, yes, that was the surprise. I had a guys. I had a surprise for Skinner. All right. So have, there is this painter, Spanish painter that I love. This is called Sorolla, mm -hmm. and he's a master of color and light. Uh, oh. It's a wonderful kind of impressionist the Spanish artist the, the most wonderful we have and I know Skinner loves impressionist uh, impressionism 
and, and this kind of art and color technique and stuff. So I brought her two paintings that she actually never saw before. All right. Bring so we are going to see what is her reaction to these two <laughs> paintings from uh, Sorolla. De acuerdo? And you will tell me, what do you think of it? Do you like them? You don't. Here it is. We have first El Bote Blanco, the white boat from 1909. And then we have Paseo a la Orilla del Mar, which is a walk next to the sea, and also 1909, so the same year. And um, I think these two are, are two of the most beautiful paintings from Sorolla because you can really see his amazing ability to play with light and color and, and also the, the structure of the painting, the schema of the figures, the lines and everything is, is really, it's really magical. And yeah, what do you think, Skinner? It was, uh, it, it hit me straight away. It was like, but also like, I'm so amazed, but also feel like I got slapped in the face. It's like, you should paint better. You should paint better. <laughs> it's like, ah, no, I should learn more technique. In, in painting, it was like, oh, it's light. Look at but the you background. know what? He was, he was very, he was for years, he was scolded for not having um, a technique pure enough because at this time in Spain, it was really about a perfect drawing, everything with uh, such a minimal detail. And as you see, he wasn't doing that. Yeah. He was in a much yeah. more free way of painting, yeah. uh, very long way of like the brush is really big the brushes are really big on the on the painting so he's not using such a perfectionist technique mm -hmm. uh, but he's very effective right uh -huh. it, it, maybe it's just come naturally for i really need to interview soroya if it's her life like literally like, how do like how you do this like help me <laughs> because mm -hmm. i really want to like the the value because my value is absolutely Oh, it's absolutely bad. And damn, look at the look at the water and everything. And the movement on, on the hat as well. Also. And the, the shadow of the umbrella, the shadow when these two girls walking. And it's it's perfect. And yeah. I think it's more beautiful in the painting. <laughs> than in reality. Yeah, I think that the painting is way more beautiful <laughs> than reality. You think you think Soroya improves reality? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you because he's he was obsessed. He was obsessed with light, with the effects on, on light over objects or over elements. That's why you can see actually how the with very few things you can see how the skin from the voice is wet. Yeah, you can see how it's wet. And you can see how the sun is hitting from this side, but the shadow is on his side, on this side. And you can see the transparency of the water, how the water is transparent. And you still can see like the continue uh, of the of the under of the lower part of the boat. You can see the bodies from the kids yeah. uh, playing in the water. You can see many things that we, if we will look very close in the painting, you wouldn't yeah. see them. Exactly. You wouldn't see them. You would only see blocks of colors and, and just random brushes yeah. of, uh, of color. There as well. Like if you see these two ladies, it's just like, oh, I feel the breeze of the oceans. Yes. You really can't feel it, right? It's like if you would be yeah. there. <laughs> it's like real, like real. You say, oh, yes, it would be wonderful to wear one of these dresses. How amazing. And, uh, <laughs> True. Have the hat. Damn. And the umbrella. Yeah, yeah, because he painted uh, outside, right? He went to the beach and uh -huh. uh, there uh, and painted over there. So uh, at least took his sketches and then painting inside. But uh, his inspiration was always outside, where where the light was natural and real. Yeah. So, yes, this is this is Soror. Yeah, I'm very happy that I had the opportunity to introduce him to you. Skinner. And something that he said, this was his quote, is I always paint with my eyes. Because he was very obsessed with the light, right? Yeah. So he was the kind of artist that was constantly analyzing uh, 
the, the image he had in front of him and how to transport that image to a canvas, mm -hmm. right? But the truth is, uh, Soroya for many years, uh, he didn't receive any respect from uh, his uh, other colleagues, right? In Spain at that time, uh, it was expected to paint with a lot of detail. Uh, like if you would paint a photography, like, like doing a photography, um, and not in this more um, a free way. And, and it was very, he tried for a long time to adapt to what he was asking for until the moment where he said, okay, I'm just going to paint what, I, what I'm born to paint. Can you relate to that? Yeah, I was like, yeah, just leave me alone. Just let me do it my way. <laughs> <laughs> but did you also have this time where you, um really try to paint what it was expected i'm trying wow. i'm trying and i was like even today like i give a a, a painting to my yeah. friend who i had a birthday the other day and i was yeah. like you know i know you request this to me but do not put high expectation it's not going to look like you it just <laughs> like you. it's like okay i'm sorry but i tried but i tried it, mm -hmm. it's hard so that's why I was like, that is why I do surrealism. I don't do realism. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't need you don't need to say sorry. We are very happy that someone does surrealism. World is full of cameras. Yeah. True. <laughs> Every phone has a camera to do a picture. So <laughs> anyway, there's there's wonderful realistic painters out there that do a wonderful job and they are absolutely amazing. But how it is, because um, especially in a young age like you, I think it's quite hard to get recognition for your job as an artist. It's difficult to, to get this, um, uh, to get somehow famous or, or, to, or to be able to uh, show your paintings in many places. That, that's difficult at this age, um, like for young artists. How do you manage the uh being being quite often rejected as as I, as I think it happens to many young artists right that they're often rejected how do you guys cope with that <laughs> well it's uh you know what for all new artists for all emerging artists don't quit please don't quit because it's hard even for me even though I'm let's say I'm not really that expert on my painting not really technically or academic academically but let alone that, like all my painting have blood and it's just like so macabre and it's not even qualified to be like, no, it's, it's too sensitive. It's hard to really get the message because for my, uh, for my problems, it's more into like people that think that it's triggering and it's like something that is not supposed to be seen by people which is hard, but it's, it's, it's the important thing is the message that you want to, uh, to show the world. And with, for me, just try to get more exhibitions, just try to exhibit. But when you exhibit it, please really, really uh, explain the message of your paintings so people can, can understand that they, they can comprehend what you paint. Because if you just paint, let, let's say if I just paint like some bloody um, uh, painting on the wall, people are going to be like, oh, that's really scary. I don't want to see that. But when you say the message, this, uh, this painting is about this, 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 people are going to understand like, oh, okay. And then they're going to be interested in you. So first it's just help them to comprehend your paintings. Mm. I think that's quite... Uh, helpful especially if you get rejected a lot so mm -hmm. and also try to make something that uh, uh, hit people really in the in the heart maybe my painting is not really nice but it's quite uh, a slap for a lot of people <laughs> so <laughs> oh I mean <laughs> everything there's many ways right there's those other painters who yeah. chose to do very uh friendly painting i'm thinking of botero what is uh, also a latin american painter and everything was like a happy world in True. in botero's painting and and yeah. he was also very successful because 
he was showing a part of life that is also there that is happiness peacefulness quietness uh family life uh partner love um all these things right so so whatever is the message you have to deliver go for it right there's the, there's no right message or a wrong message to to show through art it's just the message exactly. what you show yeah I, I have one question more for you skinner last one if you're still yes. not too, too exhausted of my questions no 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 <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. The funniest day, the funniest day of my life, being able to interview a uh, true artist. Um, <laughs> and is that as as we said before, Soroya was very obsessed with light. So he was constantly studying it, um, practicing it, uh, trying different things. What is the topic that you are continuously exploring in your artwork? What is the thing? That, that you can that you is never perfect and you want to do better and do better and do better and do better for um for the genre of course i want to be more uh surrealist because like all my paintings still like okay it's a it's a, a girl or it's a, a crow or it's an octopus but like i want to create something that is more like dali that is more surrealist like it's not you you never see it in the world in reality and mm -hmm. or technically of course i want to be more um uh, good at techniques as well because it's quite flat and like the value is not really <laughs> try mm -hmm. my best but yeah it's still a, a long way to go for me and for a topic and a message i think i'm still going to um bring up more uh, issue that we need to be aware of uh in society, family, friends, mental issue, everything like that. I want to uh, show to the world like it's, it's everyone is broken and it's okay. And don't be ashamed of it. Just want to give a message. If anyone in the world see my painting, it's like, you're not, you're not alone. We are, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here, experience that as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, so nice. Thank you very much, Skinner. Okay, so those were all my questions for you, but I think now is a very good time for our viewers to give their own questions because I think we have some interesting ones um, yes. uh, in yes, the chat. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paula and Skinner, for the very interesting discussion. Paula, I think I think you blew um, Skinner's mind with the with the Soroya's painting. <laughs> Absolutely, it was all my intention. <laughs> <laughs> and. And Skinner, I mean, thank you so much for sharing your powerful journey on becoming an artist. You are awesome. I have, you know, an admiration for you right now. Um, okay, so we have some questions. I think, Paula, if you want to uh, stop sharing your screen, I think it's fine. So we can see everyone in the, in the Zoom call. I want to see um, faces, <laughs> people's faces here. Um, yeah, so are you ready for some questions? I have questions here sure. from our yeah. um, audience here on Zoom and YouTube as well. Um, the first one is from Febi. Uh, this one is for, for Skinner. How do you deal with artist block? <laughs> like um, writer's block. Oh, I got a lot. Even on a writing, that's why I keep like making new title, new title, new title. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is for artist block usually you know when you're so excited like all oh, this burst of emotions like the inspiration coming it's just like oh i want to draw uh, i want to draw or paint and then all of a sudden just like poof gone like bye but uh what i what i want to do in that is usually i have a um, spare of canvases so if there's that inspiration coming in i just paint on that if it's not continue then and probably those piece of uh canvas you can develop it later but then there's another inspiration hits you you do on a other canvas and if you see like let's say five ten canvases with those um small painting or whatever the inspiration was hit you you can combine it maybe that's how i do it mm -hmm. So okay. I just find it right away, but then after that, I just leave it, and then I will develop that la later. 
it's a good tip. Maybe Febby can can um, try to do that when she um, <laughs> gets an artist block. <laughs> All right. So thank you. And for the next question, I think uh, Paula and Skinner can can answer this this question. Um, it's from Nabila. She wants to ask if every painting has a meaning. Do only people who understand art know the meaning? What about the general public? Can they understand the message or is it just going to be a symbol of beauty or something else? Very good question from it's Nabila. A very good question. It's a really great question because um, actually the absence of a meaning is also a meaning. It's also a meaning. <laughs> yes, it sounds, I, I know it sounds crazy, but it's like that. So sometimes uh, painters are, um, they really want to, deliver something that has no meaning mm -hmm. they want to deliver mm. something that has no meaning and 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 that makes sense in art because meaningless things are also part of us as human so True. yes sometimes some artists i'm thinking um for example no maybe miro is not a good but there's many there's that's really that's really many who really try to to just the impressionism, for example, impressionism is a movement that they don't have an idea behind. They have an, a technique for painting, but there's no uh, there's no philosophy behind them. There's no an idea to read, just to enjoy the colors. That's their theory. That's their point of view. That's what they want to share with the world. And anyways, people loves it. Everyone loves. Impressionism. Everyone loves Monet, Manet. Everyone loves them because they still they they still achieve the goal of moving you and making enjoy the painting just because of the colors that are there. They do an impression in you without sharing any message. So yes, absolutely, it's absolutely possible to do art without a message, and it's absolutely possible to enjoy art without knowledge because art many times is made by people that doesn't have a vast knowledge on history of art. It's just people who has the necessity of expressing things. So no, there's many ways of enjoying art. You can, if you learn more about art, then of course you will have this, all this background and this knowledge that will help you to find little things in the painting that, and that can be very funny and interesting. But even if you don't have idea about it you still can just go there sit in front of the painting and see what happens just see how your body reacts to the painting just watch the colors enjoy enjoy the image you don't know who is that who cares it's not that important true i right? think also uh, every artist sometimes have a meaning of a of a painting but when you exhibit it, there's a lot of audience going to see it. And I think a lot of people going to feel a different way and going to perceive your painting different way. Maybe the painting was, the meaning of the painting was A, but then the audience was like feeling like, I, I think the painting was talk about B, C, or D. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, because not. you reflect about yourself through the painting. You also, um, painting also works a little bit as a mirror. So you you don't only see the, the artist, you see yourself. True, yeah. Somehow. So so it's open to everyone. You don't need to have any knowledge in order to enjoy art. So art would you say that artists usually are okay when when their paintings or their arts are being misinterpreted by by the audience? <laughs> the word is first. You first. You first. It's interpreted. If, <laughs> well, if they have a different different uh, perception of the painting, yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. But uh, to misinterpret. Well, there's a lot of art that we always misinterpret. But yeah. I think you just use your feelings to. Whatever it maybe it was about pain, but then if you feel sad or happy, it's also fine to to perceive that that way. As long as you I'm feel gonna, it. I'm way. gonna say something a little bit more savage. I hope you forgive me for that. 
guys <laughs> go on <laughs> go ahead <laughs> but the thing is in in the in the experience i have what is artist being an artist is a very tough profession it's not something where you can have maybe you will have some success or maybe you won't have any success you just want to try to get as far as possible and try to get as much support as possible so as long as the people is talking about the art i think that's already something for the artist if they are talking about it even if they are completely misinterpreted if they say that oh, i don't understand what is this or blah, 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 the thing is they are talking about it it's creating an impression it's creating a reaction and many times i feel like that's enough for many artists because it's like okay they don't get me but my art gets them because it creates mm. a reaction in them true <laughs> excellent questions to an excellent uh, excellent answer to an excellent question <laughs> yeah, definitely. it was a very good question all right uh, next one is from alifa uh, she has a very interesting question can memes be considered as art since it's now somehow also a way of expressing oneself and very often get political too. Mm. I mm. I saw this question in the chat and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Um, I would say on my side, on the side of the specialist, I would say that we actually don't know what is art. We the only thing that tell us what is good art is time. So when when Van Gogh was painting during his life, he was poor and no one cared about his painting. Only his brother were buying his paintings. The paintings from Vincent Van Gogh, where he was really unknown and very, uh, he wasn't liked. His paintings were really not famous and no one liked what he was doing. And now we know that he was a person that was way, way, uh more modern than the other artists around him so is this perspective of time what actually tell us what is art if we understand art as something that represent us as human beings right in a certain moment in a certain uh, moment of history in a certain environment in a certain topic so memes are an artistic work definitely are an artistic work because you're the same way there is a collage. A collage is an artistic work. So a meme is an artistic work. It is true art, like it has this um, deep um, importance or it has this, it's gonna have this effect in the books of history of art in the future. Well, that we don't know. We need to wait. We need to see with the years oh, what happened. I love memes so much. It's like my phone is like memes, 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 memes. <laughs> yeah, they're wonderful. Yeah. And they're, and they're very creative. And everything that is creative is somehow artistic. Mm. Right? I think that's quite quir quirky kind of art as well. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is from Jessica. Uh, I think this one is for Skinner. How do you know when your painting is finished or done? Mm, difficult one. Mm. <laughs> do you want Skinner? honest answer or not? <laughs> <laughs> up to you. Both, up to both. you, up to you, up to you. <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but there's a time that uh, I have a advice for my friends because I'm a maximalist person. And sometimes I don't know how to stop. And, you know, I have a, I have for a go in me. I was like, I think it, it, I have to do it more, like more, more. It's not, uh, this, this perfection is just like, oh, I want to do it. It's, it's not really nice. But my friend said, you know, sometimes you have to understand when to stop. Because the thing that you see is because, because you know that line is not connected. So you were like, it's not connected. I have to fix that. But people doesn't care. But it was already looks amazing, but because you know, because you paint that. So you always like try to fixing things. It's like adding more, adding more, and it's just turned out into like too much. So you have to learn how to like stop, which is trying so hard for that for now. But my friend said that. So if it's 
probably ask a, a few of your friends. Maybe is it is it already enough, or is it like something that I need to fix? If it's not, is there? Say, oh yeah, it's already good. Or then then stop. Don't 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 see too much on the details because you're not going to stop. Because I I did that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent because advice. I don't know where to start. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Skinner. <laughs> okay. Um, next is from Andy. He, I think he wants to share. Uh, I'm just going to read the, what he wrote here. Um, I have a problem that my art style is uh, keeps changing. I feel like a hypocrite. My main personality isn't consistent. Seems like I don't know my art and myself yet. Is that okay? Perhaps, uh, perhaps Skinner or any Hispanic artists uh, in in history have these uh, the same experience. Ask Frida. She was <laughs> she was there her whole life. <laughs> so for Andy, uh, it was like uh, one of my close friends back in the hometown. It's been years I didn't spoke to him uh, because I know that you were a Virgo. So <laughs> I know that you were like sometimes too perfectionist as well and but for an artist if they keep changing style actually it's okay as long as you're uh, experimenting and which which part that you uh, more comfortable and yes sometimes if you want to be commercial then you you want to have like one style that representing you but i guess as an artist we also have to try a lot of uh media mediums and uh, a lot of things and in that process sometimes our style changing a lot and my style before it was quite a like 3p galaxy abstract and then i suddenly jump on surrealism and i wasn't really uh confident at first i was like i never do surrealism and then my first uh, style is not like this but then i was like trying to find because i'm uh keep keep doing something else that that is different with my original style and uh, until you find there's always one thing that it's you that you always come back to that and when you found that maybe you can develop it even further so and it, it it's okay and you always like keep jumping to like another painting and another painting and it's 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 fine it's okay and it's just Excellent. a process I hope it answers your question, Andy. If not, then you sh you two should catch up after this event. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Please call Skinner. <laughs> All right, next one is from Regine. Um, she has a question. Okay, as a fellow art lover and small wannabe artist, in brackets, do you ever face insecurities towards your art? Like that feeling when you tend to compare your artworks with other artists? If so, how do you overcome it? Yes, love seeing your artworks, Skinner. It speaks volumes. Oh, thank you so much, Regine. Thank you so much. Um, insecurities, it's actually, it's my husband. So <laughs> I have that a lot. And I, have to, uh, and I think it's because we have an inner perfectionist. So we always like to compare. And it's like, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. And I think we need to stop comparing ourselves with other artists but the thing that i did is i have i know my style and i know what i like to paint usually i'm going to look for the artists that i really like that um, have a similar topic or genre with my painting and then i will uh, I'm going to uh, see some painting that almost similar topic with mine and then improve it. So I think it's better rather than, oh, mine's not good enough. It's not good enough. I, like if you see all my painting, all the nose, because I'm so bad at painting nose, I hate it. All my painting have a crooked nose and I don't like it. And I was compared it to other artists like, oh, the nose is perfect, shit, I, I should do it even better. So you know what? I cannot do nose and it's okay. And it's okay, but I tried, but it's okay. It's going to be good in, in the process. So don't worry about that. Awesome, hopefully that so answers. That's, I hope that helped for you. Yeah. So stop <laughs> comparing, but look for more inspiration. Okay, good. 
Um, next one is from Anne. Hi, Skinner. I'd like to know when is your favorite time of day to create painting? At night. At night. Mm. It's, it's just like, oh, it's quiet. And I just like focus on my emotions because I paint with emotions. So night is the best time for me. But of course, the next day I'll be like, look like a zombie. So <laughs> that is the best time for me, paint at night. Okay. From Leia, hi Skinner, I wonder, are there any other forms of art do you usually make or do other than paintings? Uh, I just currently starting doing uh, clay uh, sculptures. And I think it's quite fun for me. I never try that, but I really, I have a, uh, I'm a big fan of sculptures. So that's why I like, do this tattoo on me. I really like sculptures, but never try that because I know like, oh, that is, it's too realistic. Probably I cannot do that. But now I'm starting to uh, do clay to sculpt other than painting because I always do just painting. I don't, I, I don't do any other art, but now I'm starting doing clay. All right, so cool. Hopefully we'll get to see it sometime soon. <laughs> or writing. Hmm. I'm a big yes. fan of Paul, so it's like, it's all in my tattoo. <laughs> a poem, because I do all my painting have a poem to mm -hmm. boost the message of the painting. So I really like to write as well. That's excellent. And, and, and the audience here will get a chance to win some of your artworks at the end of this session. So please don't leave just yet because <laughs> I will announce everything and, and let you know how, how to win um, Skinner's artworks. But there's two more questions. Um, one is from Apri. How do you define the word of success as an artist? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Difficult <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> So, Those are difficult questions. You know what? If my painting speaks to people and they get the message and they can stand in my shoes, that's what I call success when creating art. Great. Great answer. Very diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one last question is from me. Um, I'm sorry to hijack, but I do have a question for you, Skinner, because I come from a language community and, you know, I learned a lot from, from Dime Porque and from, from our community. And you come from an art community, which is Lucy Dream. I want to know for you, how does being in a community help you as an artist? What are the impacts and how, how are your experiences being in an artist community? Uh, it's actually Dream? open a lot of a uh, point of view for me as an artist because when you what I feel if you don't meet another artist to like brainstorm and like um, uh, talk about art your art going to stuck it's just like mm -hmm. just because that's the only thing that you know but when you go in a community and you see what other people do uh, you got inspired and then there's will be a lot of things uh, you will got a lot of inputs when you are uh, doing art and it's improve your skill and how you do art a lot better and I didn't realize that until I came to Bali to uh, join art community and they are they're quite amazing and they can help you to um study art they can help you to find inspiration they can you have a lot of friends that can brainstorm about some topics or responding to a topic or issues uh, related to art and it was quite amazing uh, experience for me to jump into art community Excellent. I think Indonesian people really love being in a community and I think we have the best communities <laughs> here right now in, in, in this event, um, both from Dio Porque and Ebriha and, and also Lucy Dream. Okay, so if, if everyone looks at my screen now, <laughs> um, if, if, if um, all looks good, I'm going to let you know how you can win some of the coolest prizes that we have for this event of course like like with all of our events we can't let you go without giving you a chance to win the these merchandises through social media challenges it's very easy you don't have to do anything embarrassing i promise 
um, if you're not, <laughs> if you don't like to, you know, tampil in social media, it's fine. You can still participate. Um, first, all you have to do is follow all these five accounts through this um, pretty QR codes that I have put here, or just by searching for, for the names. And I think I'm going to give a few seconds for everyone um, to do it. There's a lot, but you know, it's worth it really guys. So please follow everyone here. Um, I think maybe my friend from Nebriha or from Dime Porque can help write down the, the accounts in the chat so people can just search for it. Also, I, give, uh, I, will, have, uh, I will give a small announcement because it, yes. for any of you, if you are uh, living in Bali and you are at the, uh, on vacation in Bali, uh, I'm opening a workshop at Away Hotel Legian. Yes, uh, we are going to talk about it after the giveaway. <laughs> oh, okay. <All> right. <laughs> Yes, of course, I have the, the information here. So um, back to the challenges. Um, yes, you will have two challenges that you have to post the answers creatively, um, artistically, of course, on your Instagram stories. Um, don't forget to mention all the accounts that you have followed uh, previously. Um, the deadline is tomorrow, 9 p.m. Jakarta and 10 p.m. Bali. Uh, you can screen capture this because there's a lot of information that you need to, to submit your, your posts. Um, but don't worry if you don't get everything now, we will post all the info of this giveaway in our Instagram at vime.por.k. Um, a little disclaimer, at this moment, we can only deliver the price for free within Indonesia. Um, but everyone is, of course, welcome to post anytime, but winners outside Indonesia would have to cover the international shipping costs. All right, so yes, Skinner was mentioning about the workshop in Bali. Um, we have all the information here. Maybe Skinner wants to, um, you want to explain a little bit what is going on? So yeah, I'm doing my signature 3 p galaxy painting. That is actually my first original uh, genre before. And I do a workshop how to paint a 3 p galaxy. So I'm going to uh, teach you how to do mix, mixing colors, play with colors, blending techniques with acrylics because a lot of people frustrated with acrylic and it's going to be on a tote bag. So you can have an experience painting and it's beginner friendly for a teen and adult. And if you want to uh, sign up, you can contact the number over there. And my artist friend also have a collage workshop as well. And it's quite amazing and it's quite fun to do it in the same place at Lagian uh away like in bali so if you're also interested you can contact the number in the poster and it's a special prize for today actually only today only today you will get a special prize because uh only for today for all of you who are uh joining the uh art talk show we'll have the uh discounted price Oh, excellent. Too bad I'm not in Bali. I would have, I would have joined. I love, you know, right, uh, painting something in, in tote bag, on tote bag, even though it's just ridiculous, you know, I can't draw to save my life. But, you know, it's a fun activity. I hope you guys have fun and you, everyone here should definitely join if you're in Bali. Um, all right. So we have a lot of information, but unfortunately we are at the end of our session here. Um, before I go, before we go, actually, I'd like to take some photos of, of everyone. So if you are not shy, <laughs> please open your camera and we'll try to include everyone on the screen. But of course, before, before we take a photo, I just like to say thank you once again to Institutos Nebriha Asia, Lucy Dream Gallery, Seats for a Child, Paula and Skinner. And let's take a photo together. All Thanks right, to who's, going to, who's, who's going to take the photo here? <laughs> <laughs> I just say, let's take a photo but I don't know who's going to take the photo let me <laughs> let me see okay Henry can you can you help yes okay then yeah can we can we, we do it two so times 
people here. Yes, yes, yeah. two pages, right? Excellent. Uno, dos, tres, one, two, three. Yes. Uno. <laughs> Who's going to count? Who's going to count? Who's going to count? I, you, you count. Okay. Uno, right. dos, tres. In Spanish, how do we say it, uh, Paula? In Spanish? Yes. Patatas. Patata. <laughs> say patata, chicos. Patatas. Patata. One more time, yeah? So, one, two, three, patata. Patata. <laughs> Excellent. Thank right. you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. Adios. Thank you so much, everyone. Good night. Bye. Buenas noches. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Thank you for joining. Bye. Bye. <laughs> You've got needs. Good night, guys. Good night, if everyone. Our friends from Lucy Dream and Seeds for Child wants to stay for a bit and then, you know, we can <laughs> review <laughs> the event. Hi, Ibu. Hi, Ibu. Not a suaranya. Ibu, you're on mute. Ibu, mute, Bu. Ibu, Alexa, mute. You're on mute. Yes, it was very nice. I I had I had to do transfers and okay. I'm I'm stuck with all of the things that I have to do, but I could join and and Gina, you are so comfortable with the camera. <laughs> I'm actually very nervous. <laughs> but you know, you should not say it because we don't feel it. <laughs> no, you look very good, very nice. <laughs> oh no, perfect. Uh, first of all, Ibu.